we are going to do figure of speech of our next poem number 2 that is an elementary school classroom in a slum i hope you all have uh, gone through the figure of speech of the earlier poem number 1 now we are going to start with the new poem figures of speech now in this poem i have divided the video into two parts two paragraphs it would be in first video and the another two paragraphs will be in the another video okay so we'll start first stanza if you see the first stanza we'll see line by line the figure of speech check the first line far far from gusty waves these children's faces now over here clearly from the beginning of the line itself the word far far is repeated twice so the word repetition the word far is repeated for the poetic effect now further if you see what figure of speech can be applied over here alliteration the sound of the consonants f is repeated if you see the words far and faces the both have the same sounds of the consonant f that is far faces also from is there so far from and faces the next is faces so if you remember the face whose face children face cynodoc the part of the body face is representing the whole children okay now check the next line like rootless weeds the hair toned round their pallor like okay so like is there we can come to a hint simile but are we getting the direct comparison yes simile there is a direct comparison between the hair of the children and the rootless weeds the point of comparison is where they are getting dried and withered withered means so they are getting torn off dry okay come to the next line the tall girl with her weight down head okay what can you identify from over here which figure of speech will apply cynodoc head yes the part of the body head it stands for the whole girl also weight down weight down if you remember weight is an adjective okay who is weight down the girl's head okay so the adjective weight down has been transferred from girl to her head which she is related remember we always talk about a triangle transferred epithet that is the adjective weight down it will be transferred to a girl and from girl to her head so it would be transferred epithet okay now what else can you see over here what figure of speech very easy the tall no t and th the sounds are different i told you the sounds when you pronounce th sound is th and tall t sound is t so with and way w sound has the same sound of the consonant w so weight and width okay alliteration what else her and head h sound okay so again alliteration now check the new line the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes okay rat's eyes 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 is again the part of the whole rat so cine dog can be said okay need not necessary it has to be a human being but it can be an object also where in the small part it is representing the whole object or the small or the whole animal okay the next is metaphor there is an indirect comparison between the paper and boy he is thin and lightweight like paper okay there is an always also a indirect comparison between the eyes of the boy and a rat they are very bulging okay so metaphor so there are two indirect comparison paper and the boy and the another is boy and a rat okay another is hyperbole there is an overstatement that the boy seems to be thin like a paper they could have written directly but they have over exaggerated or over stressed the sentence so it is hyperbole come to the next line the stunted unlucky hair of twisted bones 
reciting a father's garnel disease his lesson from his desk so over here stunted twisted bones and gnarled disease they are having the similar meaning but they are expressed into the different words so tautology all the three words they have the similar meaning they are unnecessarily used one word disease was okay garnet disease or could be anything but three different words are used for the same meaning which has the same meaning so tautology okay come to the next line at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young okay so what is next over here can you see what figure of speech can be identified alliteration no because of and one they have o oh, letter is the same but the sounds are not same okay repetition no okay so here we find its metonymy now what is metonymy just see unnoted sweet and young they are representing the boy sitting at the end of the class the whole three thing is representing the boy now there is a thin line difference as we are talking about metonymy there is a thin line difference between metonymy and metaphor earlier when we see we had seen metaphor uh, what it is being said paper thin boy okay so paper swimming boy so what it was the, it was directly mentioned uh, that the paper is directly compared with that of the boy paper is also mentioned boy is also mentioned with it is compared but over here unnoted sweet and young here we are just assuming that it is a boy but the boy word it is not mentioned okay so it is metonymy when we say it is metonymy the thing or the object that we are comparing it will not exist it would be a direct uh, hint okay so we have to think what could be unnoted sweet and young so it is a boy now the next one his eyes lives in a dream of a squirrel game in a tree room other than this so from this line we come to know his eyes means that boy who was sitting in a dim class he is a boy okay so it is boy we came to know over here that it is a boy so there it was metonymy but here what it could be now it's a metaphor the boy's dream of playing games like a squirrel does and the dreams that class is like a tree room so there is an indirect comparison of the squirrel playing a game under the tree room okay the next is synodoc the eyes stands for the boy on the last seat so the part i it stands for the whole boy clear so far now come to the next stanza on cream walls sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head okay so our first line is on sour cream balls donations again metaphor the walls are compared with the sour cream color here if we see the pale color of the walls is directly compared with, is indirectly compared with the sour cream walls so it is metaphor now check the next line shakespeare's head cloudless as dawn civilized doom riding all cities metonymy why metonymy because if we see representing shakespeare's head on the wall it is pointing to the civilized people in the society but over here we are talking about the slum children it is an indirection indirectly comparison which is not seen in the poem so the word shakespeare's head civilized dooms and cities it is representing a civilized society okay the modern society is not mentioned in the poem so it is metonymy okay now so i think the metonymy concept is very clear by now okay now come to the next line bellied flowery tyrolos valley here if you see we have the simil- same kind of ending sounds the rhyming words flowery and valley the both have the same sounds ending so it is a rhyming word internal rhyme rhyme because flowery and valley are used 
to create a rhyming word for the poetic effect. Next line, open-handed map, awarding the world its world. Repetition. Why repetition? The word world is repeated twice. Okay, so repetition. Next line, and yet for these children, these windows, not this map, they are world. Okay, so what can you identify over here? Just see, just think. Can you see these? Yes, the word these are repeated twice. So, it is repetition. These and this. If you see the words these and this, not this map, these children, they are having the different sounds. Although it is th, but the sounds are different. So, it will not be alliteration over here. But these children and these windows, it would be repetition. These, these is repeated. So, we are getting the word not, litotus. The word not, negation, is used to convey the positive meaning that the map on the wall, it hardly shows their world. Come to the next line. Where all their future painted with a fog. Metaphor. Why it is metaphor? The future of the slum children, it is appearing like a fog or dim. Next I can see is alliteration. Why alliteration? The future and the fog are having the similar consonant sound F. Hyperbole. There is an overstatement that their future is painted with a fog. Okay. Clear so far? Now come to the next line. A narrow street sealed in with a lead sky. The sky is compared with a lead. So, it is metaphor. Indirect comparison. The point of comparison over here is dull and sad. Come to the last line. Far, far from rivers, capes and stars of the words. Repetition. Yes, clearly it is mentioned. The word far is repeated for the poetic effect. Now, we have over here a new figure of speech. That is paradox. Here it is a weird or an absurd statement which has a deep hidden meaning that the rivers and the capes are the words like stars unreachable to the slum children who live in filth. That means it is not clearly stating the meaning but they mean to say that the star of words where it is a place where the children cannot reach or the people living on the earth they cannot reach the sky. So far, far from rivers, capes and star of words. A deep meaning is hidden over here. So it is a paradox. So I think over here the two stands are clear. We will see the next video for our other two paragraphs.